Uh, former President Donald Trump, for his part, is trying out a new line about his view of America. Take a listen. We're a dumping ground. We're like a, we're like a garbage can for the world. That's what's happened. That's what's happened to us. We're like a garbage can. It is a far cry from Ronald Reagan's vision of America. I thought a bit of the shining city upon a hill. In my mind, it was a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than oceans, windswept, God-blessed, and teeming with people of all kinds living in harmony and peace. A city with free ports that hummed with commerce and creativity. And if there had to be city walls, the walls had doors and the doors were open to anyone with the will and the heart to get here. All right, CNN's Kristen Holmes uh, joins us now as well. Uh, Kristen, I mean, that, that is a choice, uh, going out there making a, a statement like America is a garbage can as a closing argument. Yeah, and I think you're going to hear more versions of that as we head into the final days here. Donald Trump has been ramping up his rhetoric, particularly around immigration and crime, as it gets darker and darker. And, Jim, one thing you know very well is that Donald Trump believes that this rhetoric around immigration, particularly the fear-based rhetoric, helped propel him to the White House in 2016, and it could do it again. And when we're looking at all of the recent polling, particularly some polling that even shows Donald Trump chipping away at any lead Kamala Harris had— you have to think that he believes that this is working because those polls are so close and he's going to continue this kind of rhetoric as we hang in, as we uh, approach the election. And one other thing to point out here, you, there's all this conversation around Donald Trump really going off the rails, but a lot of what he is saying now publicly is stuff we know he has said in private, the cursing, the de denigrating remarks, all of that has been reported as how Donald Trump talks. Now he's just taking it to the campaign trail. And, Chris, I did want to ask you about Trump's comment to a CNN reporter, um, our Kate Sullivan, I believe, who asked Trump to respond to uh, Stacey Williams' allegations uh, that he groped her in the 1990s. Uh, CNN reported this yesterday. Uh, what did he have to say about that? Well, long story short, Jim, he didn't say anything at all. It was actually our Steve Contorno. Kay Sullivan was there. She asked another question, asking him to respond to John Kelly. Steve Contorno asked him what his response would have been to Stacey Williams. And I'll let you take a listen to this. Do you have a response to Stacey Williams' I can't hear you now. He did end up hearing a question from Kate that was about 10 feet away, and you can see how close our Steve Contorno was to him right there, but I wasn't in the room, so I can't testify as to what he he heard or didn't hear. Jim. All right, he was awfully close, uh, and he heard the other questions from Kate Sullivan. All right, uh, interesting. All right, Kate, uh, Kristen Holmes, thank you very much. Let's bring in Pete Seat, former White House spokesperson for President George W. Bush. Uh, Pete, I want to go back to, I, I, I hope you were listening into the uh, beginning of the program uh, and, and everything that we aired since, because a few moments ago we aired uh, Donald Trump's comment uh, that he sees America as a garbage can, and also Ronald Reagan's, uh, you know, shining city on the hill. I mean, that, that is a pretty startling contrast, to go from the shining city on the hill, uh, Reagan's view of America, and Donald Trump's. It's a forgotten time in America, Jim, and a lot of voters who will be headed to the polls or who have voted already were not around for the days of Ronald Reagan when leadership meant something very different than it means today, at least in Donald Trump's thinking. Leadership is about being strong and projecting that strength all across the world. I think those comments, look, I've said this dozens of times on this network and elsewhere. I wish he did not speak like this, but this is Trump being Trump. This is Stephen Miller's dream. This is what he wants. He wants Trump to be authentically himself and to speak in a way that garners coverage and attention. And as was mentioned, fear is part of the closing argument of this campaign. But I would point out fear is part of the closing argument for both campaigns. Trump is running on the fear of illegal immigration. Kamala Harris is running on the fear of Trump. And it's because fear motivates. Fear is how you get people to show up to the polls. And they're both trying to reach those low propensity voters who may show up because they're fearful 
of the alternative candidate winning. And Pete, I, there's this uh, stunning new uh, polling out uh, this morning from ABC uh, showing just about half of the country, uh, there it is right there, sees Donald Trump as a fascist. Uh, less than half as many, 22 percent, say uh, Kamala Harris is, is that way. Uh, that, that is pretty startling. Some of this polling was obviously done before the revelations uh, coming from uh, the former White House chief of staff, uh, John Kelly, and the comments that he made. Uh, what do you make of that? This country remains divided, equally split 50-50. That's why none of us knows when the election results will be available, because they could be incredibly close. They could be litigated. And again, why the campaigns are focusing on those low propensity voters, people who are not reliable, reliably Democrat, not reliably Republican. They need to get them to show up because a literal handful of votes in a very small number of states is going to determine this. And those polling results reflect that. And uh, but I, I guess uh, it's just a stunning number to see about half of Americans uh, view Donald Trump in this fashion. You and I are, are, are fairly long in the tooth. We've been around uh, cover. I, I've covered politics. You've been in politics. I, I don't recall there ever being a time where a major presidential candidate was viewed by half the country as a fascist. I mean, that that is stunning. Our rhetoric has increased. It's become more heated. It's become more volatile all across the spectrum. So I, I'm not trying to downplay the poll. Yeah. I'm just looking at it as this. This is an equally divided country. And I haven't seen any numbers recently, but I'm sure if you ask the question, is Kamala Harris a socialist, you'd probably get pretty darn close to 50 percent. Yeah, well, we don't have that number available, so we can't really uh, state that em emphatically. But, you know, Pete, a lot of uh, Trump's vitriol is about immigration. The former president pledged at that same rally to rid communities that he says have been invaded. Let's listen to that. I will launch the largest deportation program in American history to get America. I will rescue every town across America that's been invaded and conquered. These towns have been conquered. And we will put these vicious and bloodthirsty criminals in jail or we'll kick them the hell out of our country as fast as we can. Yeah, Pete, I mean, Kristen was saying earlier, you know, some of this rhetoric worked for Donald Trump in 2016, but it didn't work in 2018. I, I covered those midterms. Didn't work for Trump in 2020. Didn't work in 2022. I mean, I hate to just break it down in, in terms of strategic terms, because obviously, I mean, there's a factual thing to deal with in that communities have not been conquered. Obviously, that has not taken place. But I mean, do you do you think that this is an effective strategy that this is going to work? It has not always worked for him. Well, it does remind me of 2016 and the famous analysis that opponents of Trump took him literally, but not seriously. And supporters took him seriously, but not literally. And if you look at the record, Remember things that Donald Trump said during that campaign. He said that the United States would leave NATO. He said that he would eliminate the Department of Education. He said that he would appoint a special prosecutor to go after Hillary Clinton. None of those things happened. And that's why you've seen in recent polling Latinos, for example, they don't believe his rhetoric on this. A lot of Americans think he's full of it when he stands behind a podium at a rally and says the but things he, he yeah, says. He, and they look at the, the record of how the administration impacted their lives positively. And that's how they're casting their vote for him. Yeah, but, uh, he did do a, uh, a quote unquote Muslim ban in the beginning of his administration. Mm -hmm. He did uh, do a family separation policy during his administration. I mean, some things that he says out on the campaign trail, he does. Uh, he, he vowed to crack down on the press. He did do that. Uh, but, uh, Pete, I want to ask you, uh, J.D. Vance, the vice presidential candidate, was at a town hall hosted by News Nation last night. He was asked about his uh, handling of the debunked claims that Haitian migrants were eating people's pets in uh, Ohio. Let's listen to that. Do I think that the media certainly got distracted on the housing crisis and the health crisis and the crisis in the public schools by focusing on the eating the dogs and the cats things? Yeah, I, I do. And do I wish that I had been better in that moment? Maybe. But it's also people in my community, people that I represent are coming to me and saying this thing is happening. What am I supposed to do? Hang up the phone and tell them they're a liar because the media doesn't want me to talk about it? 
I mean, that sounds like a walk back. It sounds like he, he's he's admitting that they're not doing that. Uh, finally, admitting it that they're not doing that in Springfield, Ohio. Yeah, he obviously felt it was politically advantageous several weeks ago to not walk it back, but to now walk it back. And what you do when you receive news like that or reports such as that is you try to corroborate them. You know, in the news business, you try to get two sources that can tell you what happened or confirm right. a story for you. It doesn't seem like that was the case for J.D. Vance. He doesn't believe in double sourcing his news before speaking about it. But I do want to point out that yeah. on this very program a couple of weeks ago, Jim, we talked about this issue right around the time Donald Trump said he was going to go to Springfield, Ohio, and he never did. That tells you did. a lot. Yeah, I, I, we're still waiting to see if he's going to do that. Um, all right, Pete C., uh, we'll be watching for that. Good reminder. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it.